Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers domestic battery, resisting, and handcuffing, and is brought to us by Blue Point of View's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Fume. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo or sacred crystals from your crazy neighbor. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and they look at the problem in a different way. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. It fills the void in a natural, guilt-free way. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing while breaking your habit. I've been using the Fume Solano for a while now, and with its premium walnut barrel and Onyx black-coated mouthpiece, it looks sleek and modern. People ask me about it everywhere I go, and it's been great for helping me break my bad habits. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard hard. But switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. And there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the Journey Pack today. Head to tryfume.com audit or scan the QR code and use code audit to get 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code audit to save an additional 10% off your your order today. Thanks again to Fume for sponsoring today's episode. On July 18, 2023, Corporal Hughes of the Mount Dora Police Department responded to multiple calls alleging that off-duty Groveland police officer Joshua Somers had physically attacked his wife at a Frogger's Bar and Grill in Mount Dora, Florida. After conducting an investigation at the restaurant, Corporal Hughes, along with Officer Sanchez and Officer Alcidor of the Mount Dora PD, drove to Mr. Somers' residence, placed him in handcuffs, and escorted him to a police cruiser. The interaction that followed was captured on one of the officer's body cameras. Can you just stay with him? I gotta call Bruce. No, I'm, I'm going nowhere. I'm not giving you any um, problems. Nothing. It's not happening. <laughs> hey, she's okay other than that? What happened in progress? She's fine? Yeah. Okay. Can we please put these guys in front? On oh, what? I'm in front. You know the drill, man. I it's, do. I do. I'm listen, I... I got you. This is, it's not my call. I know. I know. That, it's that, my supervisor. Yep, 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 yep. You know what I mean? I got you. I got you. And I just stand. <sighs> I'm not, I'm not going to fight Listen. you. I'm not going to fight you. Like, there's nothing. Please. <sighs> Please put these in front of me. Please. I'm begging you. Okay. Just give me a second. Let's just hand tie it. Once the supervisor figured out what we're going to do, then we'll go from there. I got you. All right. Okay. That's good. This is a 100% misunderstanding. Oh, yes. Hey, grab it. By her head. How long you work for Groveland? Uh, October will be six years. Six years? Yes, sir. Have a seat there. Just no. have a seat for a second, though. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Um, your camera's on, right? Because mine's dead. Yep. Okay. Just, just have him talk about what happened. Okay. Just ask him. He's already told me about my camera's on. Was your body tape? Was your dad on? Before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well then I gotta talk him, but do it again. Yeah. I'm gonna go talk to him. Alright, he's gonna talk to her, but I need to know exactly what, what you already told him, so elaborate. We got Tell me argument. exactly what happened. Wait, look, I, I walked outside onto the patio. If it's comfortable for you, you can get out now. I'm just. I, I was on the. Uh, I was inside. Okay. I walked outside and I asked where one of our friends' wives was. And. Oh. Um, and she got some guy she with me, so I okay. got her hair, and I was like, "Are you, are you kidding me right now?" Like she was. I took it as an accusation I was doing something wrong. Okay. With my friend's wife. And she's like, "What?" I was like, "Yeah, no," and then I grabbed her hair, and that was that. Like, okay. and then we were good, and then people came out, started. And I was like, get the f away from us, I will f you up, and we left and came home, and okay. everything's fine. All right. Like that, I mean, that's, 
the legit story. Officer Somers explains what happened with his wife in the restaurant and admits to pulling her hair, but does not admit to slamming her head against the wooden railing or forcefully placing his hands around her neck, as the security footage appears to show. According to Section 784.03 of the Florida Statutes, the offense of misdemeanor or simple battery occurs when an individual, quote, actually and intentionally touches or strikes another person against the will of the other, or intentionally causes bodily harm to another person. Likewise, under Section 784.04, of the Florida statutes, quote, a person commits felony battery if he or she actually and intentionally touches or strikes another person against the will of the other and causes great bodily harm, permanent disability, or permanent disfigurement. As the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over Florida, explained in the 2017 case of United States versus Vail Bailon, quote, Florida courts have emphasized that so-called great bodily harm in this context does not include slight, trivial, minor, or moderate harm. For example, mere bruises, as are likely to be inflicted in a simple assault and battery, do not satisfy the great bodily harm element. Instead, that element requires that the defendant inflict a severe physical injury on the victim. For instance, in the 2011 case of Gordon v. State, the 3rd District Court of Appeal of Florida held that great bodily harm did not occur when an individual struck another with a belt, causing bruises that healed without requiring medical treatment. And, in the 2003 case of Nguyen v. State, the 1st District Court of Appeal of Florida determined there was insufficient evidence of great bodily harm where the defendant shot the victim with a stun gun, causing burn marks but no lasting ill effects. Accordingly, while it is nearly inarguable that Officer Summers' actions constituted misdemeanor battery, it is unlikely that a court would find that the attack rose to the level of felony battery unless his actions resulted in lasting injury to his wife. Section 784.041 of the Florida Statutes also states that, quote, a person commits domestic battery by strangulation if the person knowingly and intentionally against the will of another impedes the normal breathing or circulation of the blood of a family or household member or of a person with whom he or she is in a dating relationship so as to create a risk of or cause great bodily harm by applying pressure on the throat or neck of the other person or by blocking the nose or mouth of the other person. However, in the 2017 case of the United States versus Dixon, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals concluded that in the context of domestic battery by strangulation, which is a felony of the third degree, quote, not every act of applying pressure or blocking a passageway violates the statute. The act must impede breathing or circulation, and beyond that, must cause great bodily harm or create a risk of great bodily harm. In his arrest affidavit, Corporal Hughes indicated that the security footage showed Mr. Somers placing his hands around his wife's neck, quote, in a fashion consistent with strangulation. The affidavit also stated that Corporal Hughes interviewed several witnesses who alleged that Mr. Somers had grabbed his wife's neck, and that when Corporal Hughes spoke with the spouse, he observed quote-unquote, minor redness around her neck. Accordingly, it is highly likely that a court would conclude that the officers had probable cause to arrest Mr. Somers for domestic battery by strangulation, although it is less clear whether the government would be able to secure a conviction under this statute, as it is not immediately apparent whether he used sufficient force during the attack to impede breathing or circulation, or create a risk of great bodily harm. Were your friends there too, or they were, they were not there? It was just the two of you guys. My friends were there. One of them happened to be inside. I didn't know where the other one was. Okay. That's who I was asking about. Okay. So, that was it. How long have you guys been married? Ten years and... What's the day? 18. 27. Nine days. It'll be ten years. Been together with her for... Fifteen. Did somebody call you? About the incident? And that's what you call our supervisor? Yes, sir. Yeah, we're trying to figure out if we didn't want to disclose any type of information yet. Well, we were. I... An honest guy, it was all a misunderstanding. Right? And that's 100%. <clears throat> Would never, ever put her in jeopardy when he has on her period in the store. Josh, we're I'm gonna, getting I'm going to beg y'all nicely. Josh, please, the door. Please, please, get in the car. Get in the car, Josh. Please put these in front of me. I'm going to have a panic Take attack. Please, guys, I'm not going to fight Take you. Them. You know that. You know I'm not going to fight you. We're not. I'm not. Man. We're not putting them in the I know your policy is behind the so back. If you weren't drunk, please. I might, but you're drunk, Josh. Get in the back. Sir, I can assure you Josh, I'm not. Come on. Please don't do that. Hey, come on. Please don't. Come on. Like, come on. 
Come on. Give him a call, man. Josh, okay. Come on. Please, please, please. I'm begging you nicely. Come on, man. Please, God. Josh. Josh. It's our policy. We're not going to change it. So go I ahead. Guess, just, I guess you're going to get I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not resisting. Please, 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 please put this. I please you, put them in. I promise you, there's plenty of room. Those are very loose. Just, I'm begging you nicely, oh, put them in front of me. Please. Josh, get in the car. Come on. Please. You're about to get more charges. Come on. Hey. Sit down. Okay. Oh my God. Right. Tom, take, a take a breath. Take a breath. Josh, take a breath. I can't. I can't. Oh officer Somers repeatedly refuses to comply with the officer's orders to get in the back seat of the cruiser, claiming that he is claustrophobic and will get in the vehicle if they handcuff him with his hands in front of his body. We will discuss the handcuffing issue later in this episode, but according to section 843.02 of the Florida statutes, which codifies the offense of resisting an officer without violence, quote, whoever shall resist, obstruct, or oppose any officer in the lawful execution of any legal duty without offering or doing violence to the person of the officer shall be guilty guilty of a misdemeanor of the first degree. As the 11th Circuit explained in the 2022 case of Baxter v. Roberts, this offense has two elements. One, that the officer was engaged in the lawful execution of a legal duty, and two, that the individual's action, by their words, conduct, or a combination thereof, constituted obstruction or resistance of that lawful duty. Applying these elements, Florida courts have determined that citizens can be convicted of resisting without violence for refusing to comply with an officer's lawful order. For instance, in the 20. 22 case of Senko versus Jackson, the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida noted that the statute, quote, authorizes arrest for knowingly obstructing an officer in the performance of his duties, including by refusing to obey a police officer's lawful command. Similarly, in the 1986 case of Savage versus State, the District Court of Appeal of Florida reasoned that, quote, one can resist, obstruct, or oppose an officer without committing a battery. For example, a person might struggle with an officer, or refuse to present one's hands for handcuffing, or refuse refuse to lie down when ordered, or refuse to put one's arms behind one's back, or refuse to get in a squad car when ordered to do so. Under this case law, it is highly likely that a court would conclude that Officer Somers' repeated refusal to enter the vehicle would at least give the officers probable cause to believe he had committed resisting without violence. And he just down on me. Dude, I'm begging you. I'm not gonna fight you. I'm. Not, I will go. Fix I will his, go fix without. His, fix his handcuffs. We'll do two. Can we do two handcuffs? It'll be better. No, but just leave him. Oh, I'm gonna put him I'm up not, front, dog. I'm not kidding. We'll give you two cuffs, okay? As long as you're cool, we're gonna do double cuffs, but we're not putting him in front of you. Bro. Please put them in front. Please, I'm good to go. I I, I will ride. Out the door. Undo the cuff. There you go. Please. Behind me is not gonna work. Even if there's two cuffs. Not two. They're not even going to be pulled behind you, Josh. We cannot do front cuffs. The officer tells Officer Somers that they cannot put the handcuffs in front of his body instead of behind him. Now, although the Mount Dora Police Department has not made its policies and procedures publicly available, handcuffs are typically secured behind an arrestee's back in order to restrict the movement of their hands and arms. When handcuffs are secured in front of an individual's body, they will typically have a wider range of motion with their arms and be able to use their hands more effectively. And while it is certainly possible that Officer Somers has claustrophobia that could be triggered or aggravated by handcuffing behind the back, Back, courts have generally held that handcuffing behind the back does not constitute excessive force if it does not result in harm, even when an individual has a medical reason for requesting front cuffing. For instance, in the 2009 case of Boomer v. Lewis, the U.S. District Court for the Middle District of Pennsylvania held that an officer did not use excessive force when he handcuffed an individual with his arms behind his back after the arrestee requested that officers handcuff him in front due to his spinal problems. In reaching this conclusion, the court reasoned that, quote, the fact that a belligerent person person being taken into custody demands to be cuffed in front of his waist does not mean that a denial of this demand is tantamount to use of excessive force. A law enforcement officer is not required to abandon standard restraint protocols at the demand of the person being arrested. Similarly, in the 2014 case of Young v. Brock, the U.S. District Court for the District of Colorado concluded that handcuffing an incarcerated individual with a documented medical history of back injuries who was being transferred due to disciplinary issues behind the back was constitutionally reasonable. 
unbelievable when other deputies testified that inmates were always handcuffed behind their back when being transported due to disciplinary issues, and that the handcuffing did not cause any harm to the inmate. Given this precedent, it seems likely that a court would determine that the Mount Dora officers did not violate the Constitution by refusing to handcuff Officer Somers with his arms in front of his body. Please. They're barely going to even be behind you. Make sure to tell walk. They're definitely behind me. Here. You're almost able to sit them beside you. I'm begging. We've been more than nice to you, Josh. I've been more than respectful to you as well, Hughes. All right, well then just have a seat, okay? Just take a breath. <sighs> that should be better. Your arms aren't it's behind not, you anymore. It's not. Oh, my God. We'll roll the window down for you, okay? Okay, do me a favor. Check that left arm. God damn. Give me the I'm sorry, guys. Like, I, put him in front. I'm good. It's because you got this, this wristband, man. I, but that's pretty loose now, alright? That's. Come on. Alright, have a seat. Yep. And I'll drive. Officer Somers was transported to the Lake County Jail and released on a $2,000 bond. He was officially charged with felony domestic battery by strangulation. But on August 4th, 2023, the felony charge against him was reduced to a misdemeanor battery charge. On February 5th, 2024, Officer Somers signed a pretrial intervention contract in lieu of conviction, which, under Section 948.08 of the Florida Statutes, allows first-time or second-time offenders who are charged with any misdemeanor or a felony of the third degree to complete a pretrial intervention intervention program instead of receiving a criminal conviction. While the individual is participating in the pretrial intervention program, the criminal charge is continued without a final disposition, and if the participant completes the program successfully, the charge can be dismissed without prejudice. In response to Officer Somers' arrest, the Groveland Police Department issued a statement reporting that, quote, following department policy, we immediately placed the officer on paid administrative leave pending a criminal investigation by Mount Dora Police Department and the outcome of an internal administrative investigation that is currently underway. The department also stated that, quote, the charges are deeply concerning and do not reflect our values or the high level of service and conduct to which we hold our employees, both on and off duty. All charges against our employees, especially those of this nature, are taken very seriously, and every member of our team will be held accountable for their actions. As of the date of writing this episode, no investigation results have been publicly announced. Overall, the Mount Dora officers get an A for maintaining respectful and professional demeanors throughout the encounter, conducting a thorough and unbiased investigation, and refusing to show favoritism to Officer Somers due to his status as a police officer. While the arrest may have gone smoother if the officers had agreed to handcuff Officer Somers with his arms in front of his body instead of behind his back, it is unclear whether they would have been permitted to do so under department policy. Even if they did have the discretion to handcuff Officer Somers in front, as one of the officers explained, he appeared to be highly intoxicated, and given the fact that he also had just committed a violent attack, I cannot blame the Mount Dora officers for choosing to restrict his range of motion more effectively. For the most part, the officers remained firm but polite throughout their interaction with Officer Somers, even when he became agitated and non-compliant, and I commend them for their patience and professionalism. Officer Somers gets an F for violently attacking his spouse in a public location, repeatedly refusing to comply with officer orders to get in the cruiser, and demonstrating an alarming lack of emotional stability for an individual who has been in trusted to serve on a police force. Now, while it is possible that Officer Somers actually does suffer from claustrophobia, it seems likely that his reaction to being handcuffed behind the back was at least partially fueled by his apparent intoxication. And his aversion to standard cuffing is particularly jarring given the fact that he presumably has handcuffed many other individuals in this manner. And although nobody is their best self while under the influence of alcohol, the fact that Officer Somers behaved in such a physically aggressive manner during a public argument with his wife is highly concerning, both for his wife's well-being and for the safety of any citizen who may come into contact with him while he is performing his duties. This type of violent temperament has no place in modern policing, and I would encourage the Groveland Police Department to terminate Officer Somers' employment, if they have not already done so. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic that you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.